Good morning. Welcome back. Today we're going to read Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 to 19. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. God's plan was always to incorporate the willing of all the nations into his plan of unselfishness. All will be invited, but just some will accept. Keeping the Feast of Tabernacles really kind of stands out here because among all the different feasts, there was one, exactly one, one that especially included the stranger. You can look at it back in Deuteronomy. The Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. This celebrated God's giving of, of grain, of food, of sustenance, and it also included the stranger. So here we have a case. Now back there in, the, in those days, guess what? If there was no rain, there was no food. You see, the rain grew the crops. So if there's no rain, there's no crops. If there's no crops, there's no food, and the people die. And some people might look at this and say, well, he's, it's just, this is kind of weird. It looks like God is showing us there's a time when uh, it, he sort of envisions that uh, there could be still people opposed to God and people who are for God. But again, without rain, there would really be no, uh, no food. And so God has always called all people, the stranger, everybody. has always been called into his unselfish kingdom especially at the time of Christ, the gospel went very soon after that to all the nations. This passage doesn't really propose that other nations will continue to exist. It doesn't say that. Look at it closely. Without water and food, there really couldn't be any other nations left. Remember that when a prophecy is given, God is giving it in a way that the people who hear it can understand it. They can grasp it in their own, in their own setting. And so some of the pieces that especially pertain to the very, very end might not have always been given or understandable to people in the era in which it was given. We don't look for architectural perfection here. We're looking for what God is seeking to communicate to the immediate hearers, and then we come along after. Here we are another 2,000 and more years after, and we're listening to this prophecy, and we're looking down the timeline. We can actually see the cross as we look back. They couldn't, they were going forward. They were before the cross, see? We have to give God some space to be God. We have to give him space to give the prophecies as he sees fit, not necessarily as you and I, uh, in our brilliance, think uh, would be the best way. The refusal of the principle of other love uh, would be devastating. You can't run the universe if that principle is, you can't give free will and run the universe if that principle is, is not permitted. The refusal of this principle of other love, we've, we've seen the results for 6,000 years, and we're coming to a time when we don't really need to see it anymore. It's demonstrated, settled, done, been there. Nailed it. Got it figured out. So God's unselfishness has been echoed into the world from him and from his followers for 6,000 years. When we come down to the facts, we're really looking at if you embrace self-service, uh, if you embrace it and you know put your whole self behind it, you're really embracing hatred for others. You're really embracing self-destruction. It can't, it can't work. Our God invites everyone to come to the fountain and receive life. So we need to seek God now while he may be found. This is our time of opportunity. This is it. You know, life is not an endless cycle with no judgment at the end. There's definitely judgment at the end. There's a conclusion. God's plan is linear. He takes us from the beginning. He gives us life. He gives us freedom. Bad choices are made, sadly. And we go through to a resolution of that. We come down to a spot where it's clear to everybody how it all ends. Every person is invited, invited it to the kingdom. The plague is the sure result of sin. And the sure result of that is going to be death. God offers us life. Zechariah, his servant, calls us to life in all these pictures that God gives us for these hours. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.